Welcome to the second episode of Python and Analytics. In today's session we will be covering what is business analytics, what is data analytics and the difference, similarities between business and data analytics. Intro to Python and why Python is an effective tool for analytics for programmers. We will perform Python setup and an working environment for Python, Jupyter Notebook. We will go through all the requisites useful for the upcoming sessions. Understanding fundamentals. Every session will have a deep dive notes which can refer first before watching that particular session. This will construct the programming basement strong. Please read through the fundamentals first and then watch the respective session. Business analytics refers to the practice of using data, statistical methods, and analytical techniques to extract valuable insights and drive data-informed decision-making within organizations. It involves collecting, analyzing, and interpreting data to gain a deeper understanding of business performance, identify trends, patterns, and relationships, and make informed predictions and recommendations. To improve business performance, we will determine the below with the data. With the data, we historically analyze the business, where we came from. This is called, descriptive analytics, focuses on summarizing and interpreting historical data to understand what has happened in the past. It involves using data visualization, reporting, and basic statistical techniques to gain insights into key performance indicators, KPIs, and trends. Next, what we are, called, predictive analytics, which utilizes historical data and statistical modeling techniques to make predictions about future outcomes. It involves building predictive models, leveraging machine learning algorithms, and applying statistical methods to forecast trends, customer behavior, market demand, and other relevant variables. Finally, where we are moving. Once we identified the pattern, trend or technically figure out the relationship between variables, we will try to forecast the future. It combines predictive models, optimization techniques, and decision-making algorithms to suggest the best course of action to achieve specific business objectives. This is called as prescriptive analytics. Data analytics refers to the process of examining, interpreting, and deriving insights from data sets to uncover patterns, trends, and useful information. It involves applying statistical and quantitative techniques, as well as data visualization methods, to extract valuable insights and support decision-making. Data analytics involves different stages including, first, Data collection is a fundamental process in the field of data analytics and involves gathering relevant and accurate information from various sources to support analysis, decision-making, and research objectives. Second, data cleaning and transformation are integral stages in the data preparation process, aiming to enhance the quality and usability of collected data for analysis, modeling, and decision-making. Third, data visualization is a powerful and essential component of the data analysis process, involving the use of graphical representations to communicate complex data patterns, trends, and insights in a clear and concise manner. In summary, data analytics is a subset of business analytics, specifically focused on the analysis and interpretation of data. Business analytics, on the other hand, encompasses a broader set of activities that leverage data analytics along with other analytical techniques to address various business challenges and optimize organizational performance. Now, let us understand Python. Python is a high-level programming language known for its simplicity and readability. It was created by Guido van Rossum and first released in 1991. Since then, Python has become one of the most popular language globally. It has several advantages to use for analytics and below are the few mentions. 1. User-friendly and readable syntax. 2. 
rich ecosystem of libraries. 3. Scalability and performance. 4. Data visualization capabilities. 5. Data science frameworks. 6. Interoperability with other technologies. 7. Broad adoption and community support. 8. Machine learning and AI integration. Now, let's begin setting up Python for the course. You can install Python either via python.org or via Anaconda distribution. Detailed installation process of Python shall be referred in the link shared in description. In this course we will proceed with Anaconda distribution installation. Most convenient way to get started with Python is by installing Anaconda distribution. Anaconda distribution used by a lot of data scientists as it gives wide range of standard libraries installed by default. Follow along with the instructions and accompanying screenshots to ensure a seamless installation experience. Step 1. Visit the Anaconda website. By default, you will be able to see the operating system you are working on while browsing this site. You can click the download button to download the installer. If not, click additional installer based on your OS, Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu. Once click download, Anaconda distribution downloader will get downloaded in your machine. Now we will proceed with the installation. Click the Anaconda installer downloaded. Click next to proceed for the license agreement. Read the license agreement and click I agree to proceed further with the installation. In this screen, go with the recommended option and click next. In the choose install location screen, validate the space required and go with the default path chosen for installation or click Browse and change the path to install the Anaconda distribution. Click Next. Under the Advanced Installation Options, go with By Default Checked. Register Anaconda 3 as My Default Python 3.11. No need to change this, as this 3.11 Python will be used across IDE text editors we are going to work with Python programming. Click Install to install Anaconda. Wait for the installation to complete. Installation complete message will appear once installation completed. Click next and launch Anaconda Navigator and finish setup. Anaconda Navigator will be launched as shown. In the home page, you can see all available applications. Move to the Environments tab in the left pane to verify the list of libraries installed as part of Anaconda installation. Python and libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib are installed with Anaconda automatically. Hooray! We had completed the Anaconda distribution installation successfully. Kindly provide your completion status in the comments section. If you have any questions or encounter any issues during the installation process, feel free to leave a comment. Now we will proceed to get familiarized ourselves with Jupyter Notebook. Let's straight jump into the Jupyter Notebook launch and working. Open the Anaconda Navigator, click the Launch button under Jupyter Notebook. This will open the browser with local hosting. From the landing browser page, you can move to any folder you need to create a new Python Jupyter Notebook. You can create a folder if needed under the new button at the right corner, otherwise click Python 3 IPyKernel. This will create a new Jupyter Notebook with name as Untitled. Click that to rename and save to a required file name and press Rename. This notebook we are going to use to get familiarized with Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is very popular among data scientists and data analysts because of its versatility. It can clearly depict the explanation for the codes and also run the program smoothly. Just go through this demo notebook and play around to familiarize yourself with Jupyter Notebook. Let's jump in why Jupyter is very handy and useful IDE for Python. Jupyter Notebook is made up of cells. 
each cell can represent an explanation or comment or notes or a code. This notebook is started of with a heading of what this is about, followed by some subtitles and then some notes to read. The cell is marked as Markdown, and if you go in edit mode, you can see the usage of hash symbols to write the headings and subtitles. You can run it by pressing the Run button and see how it displays. Similar way the next cell shall be entered in an edit mode to see how the notes are prepared for easy reading. What styles are used inside to present the explanation scene. For instance, BR represents break means the words or sentences after that break will be displayed in next line. Strong will be used to display the words or phrases in bold in the explanation part. Now, let's move into today's agenda with Jupyter Notebook. We are going to run a sample program to see through the Jupyter Notebook advantages and functionalities. Next we will discuss on the shortcuts, functionalities of Jupyter Notebook to get ourselves familiarized. Just run the sample program given, to see through the power of Jupyter Notebook and its quality visualizations. Now never mind, if you didn't understand the code also, because we are going to learn those in our upcoming sessions. Just simple run it and see the visuals. It's quite amazing right? Just few lines of code we are able to visualize the insights. The Jupyter Notebook visualization of charts will be eye-catchy and clear, when compared to many of other IDE exists. Let's move to the second topic of familiarize with Jupyter Notebook. If you see, the cell is set as markdown, and the text is of second level heading style. Each cell in Jupyter Notebook will do its intended activity like coding or markdown as defined. Click on any cell to see the cell type on top. If you see, the previous cell set as markdown, and it was a heading and notes. Current cell is set as code, but still there is a text in it and no code involved. How come, in Python, hash is a symbol used for comment? Text follows hash will be considered as a comment and has no value in code. Now let's do some hands-on practice. First, let's create one markdown cell and create some headings. Keyboard shortcut is M to mark the cell as markdown. Just type one hash followed by heading one and two hash followed by heading two and so on till four hash followed by heading four. Execute the cell and see the result. Each hash has its significance in displaying the text. You can see that this cell is marked as markdown. In the next cell, the cell type is marked as coding and we had given one hash followed by heading one. It didn't display the text as proper heading as we seen like earlier cell output. This is because the cell marked as coding and anything follows hash will be considered as comment and has no value. Following cell marked as coding and has only value as heading one. If run this cell, will give syntax error as per Python interpretation. This we will learn progressively in our upcoming sessions. For now, just understand the differences between coding, markdown, and comments in Python and Jupyter Notebook. In the markdown cell, if we need any bullet point for our text, simply use hyphen, then provide the text and execute the cell to see the required output. Now let's move on to the cell modes. Jupyter Notebook Cells has basically two modes. One is Command mode and another is Edit mode. The cell color with blue denotes the cell is in command mode. Cell color with green denotes that the cell is in edit mode. In command mode, we can create a new cell or delete the cells and other kernel interruption or restart. In edit mode, we shall type the code or explanation. The keyboard shortcut to execute the cell can be either Ctrl plus Enter or Return, or Shift plus Enter or Return. 
basic difference is that Control plus Enter will simply execute the cell and stay there, but Shift plus Enter execute the cell and move to next cell. Now, let move to practice some keyboard shortcuts in creating and deleting cells. Let's create two cells above and below to the current cell. Press B to create cell below the current cell. Go to the practice cell and press A to create new cells above. It's just that simple with keyboard shortcuts. Now let's delete one each from above and below. Simply click the cell you want to delete and press D twice. Whatever we did via keyboard shortcuts shall be performed via a click. Insert menu or edit menu will help for cell insertion or deletion. Sometimes, during code execution, in Jupyter Notebook, it might run long or stuck and no output will appear in the output cell. During those times, we shall use the kernel features like interrupt, restart, restart and clear output, restart and run all. Interrupt will stop the running event and restart will restart the kernel which will automatically kill all running events. Restart and clear output will restart kernel and clear all cell output. Restart and run all will restart kernel and run all cells post restart automatically. To summarize what we have learned today, we have discussed about business analytics and its techniques like descriptive, prescriptive and predictive analytics and the way it used to resolve the business challenges. Then we discussed about data analytics and its stages involved like data collection, data cleaning and transformation and data visualization. We also discussed about the business and data analytics similarities and differences. Next, we had discussed about Python and why Python is effectively used in the field of data analytics. We further proceed with the Anaconda step-by-step -step installation process and its advantages. Finally, we had put our hands on to get familiarized with Jupyter Notebook which will help us in the upcoming sessions. Hooray! We had come to the end of the Introduction to Python and Analytics session. Thanks for watching and hope you had the clear understanding on the session. For any queries, please comment. We will see you in the next session.